The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 3, writing and presenting. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate planning skills for writing for a specific purpose, audience and contexts. It also requires learners to explain the requirements of a familiar range of tasks. Learners should be able to decide on and apply the appropriate style, point of view and format of texts. They should also be able to research topics from familiar sources and record their findings. Hello, welcome. I'm Nicola Shongwe. Welcome to our final lesson on summarizing. So far, we've learned a number of skills that can be used in a wide range of situations. We've learned study skills and mind maps, how to skim and scan, and how to write point form and selective summaries. Today, we're going to approach summary skills in a more formal way and we need to take note of some hints to help us do this. Formal summaries often appear on examination papers, but they are also used in our everyday lives. A formal summary requires us to get rid of detail without altering the basic sense of the article. In other words, to take off the flesh of the article and be left with the bones. Here's a definition of a formal summary, which you may sometimes hear being referred to as a precy. A formal summary or precy is the shortened version of a text written in paragraph form. It contains the essential points of the original. Now remember, although you are shortening your original passage, your precy must read clearly as a continuous, grammatically correct paragraph. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to construct a summary which consists of the main points of your article and express the main points briefly and in your own words. To write effective formal summaries, you will have to master a few points. Clearly understanding what you read, judgment in selecting the important points, and expressing these points using your own words and good sentence construction. If you can remember these points, then you'll have a good idea of what is required in writing a formal summary. Remember once again that reading with understanding is important in being able to produce a summary of a passage. Let's look at the following text which was taken from the Sunday Times. We're going to tackle it paragraph by paragraph to see how we can produce an accurate formal summary. Situated at the center of the cradle of humankind, Mohale City, which includes Krugersdorp and Mohalesburg, came out tops in the 2002 Engine Town and Village of the Year competitions. That's the opening paragraph. Now what's the key information that it contains? Well, let's have a look. Came out tops in the 2002 Engine Town and Village of the Year competitions. You could condense this paragraph like this. Mohale City won the competition for the most promising town and village in the engine competition of 2002. Do you see how even although the information has been shortened, the sentence could still stand on its own? Let's see how the article continues. Krugersdorp won the town of the year in Gauteng and the quaint Mahalisburg took the number one village prize for the province when the winners were announced recently. Remember how we said that details and descriptions can be left out of summaries. Well, let's see what we can leave out here. Right, let's look at the details here. And I think we start off with in Gauteng and this description of Mahalisburg, quaint. We'll move on 
took the number one village prize for the province. We'll cross out village prize for the province. And that should do it. You could write something like this instead. Krugersdorp and Machalisburg were winners in the Town of the Year competition. The article continues with a quotation. We have many attractions but are not known, said Dennis Pretorius of Machale Tourism. Our disadvantage is that we are not in an area with natural attractions like the beach, he said. When someone has been quoted in an article, it's not necessary to reproduce their exact words. Instead, you can write it down in indirect speech like this. Mr. Pretorius said that Mohale has many tourist attractions, but these are ignored due to the lack of natural attractions. Do you see that I've not given the example of the beach as a natural attraction? This is because it's not necessary to include examples in summaries. As we read through the next paragraph, let's see if you can work out how to condense it. Krugersdorp is a small town on the West Rand that is more than 100 years old. It owes its existence to the Transvaal War of Independence in 1881 and the discovery of the Witwatersrand gold deposits in 1886. What are the key points in this paragraph? So let's have another look at the paragraph. Right, you should have zoned in on the fact that the town is 100 years old and it owes its existence to the Transvaal War of Independence and the discovery of gold. We wouldn't include the dates that these occurred because these are unnecessary details. Try the same exercise with this final paragraph. Mohale City, previously known as Krugersdorp Local Council, is named after Chief Mohale of the Bapoba Mohale tribe, who were the original inhabitants of the area. See if you can spot the key points. Here, the most important fact is that the city is named after a chief. The details of the original inhabitants are not key issues in this article. As we've worked through this article, we've been using some of the skills that we learned earlier. To complete this task, we have had to understand what we read, select the important points, and express these points in our own words. Unfortunately, we only have time to read through this passage once today, but in the ideal situation, we would read it and reread it and really make sure that it makes sense and that we understand what we've written. Before we go on to writing the formal summary, we would need to establish, one, what is the writer telling us? And two, how could we sum up the passage in a sentence or two? There are many correct ways of doing this. This is how I would do it. Mohale City won the competition for the most promising town and village in the engine competition 2002. Although it has no natural features, it has a long history and many attractions. That sums up the essence of the article. Now we need to look at it further to condense it and see if we can formulate a title. A good title should contain no more than five words and should not contain any figurative language. This would be a suitable title for our article. Cradle of Humankind Wins Competition. This title is accurate and would probably encourage the reader to continue reading to satisfy her curiosity. Once you have the title, you then need to write the summary by listing the essential points from the article. We did this as we went through our article, but now let's just recap the things that you need to bear in mind. Possible, replace a phrase with a single word. Do not include repetitions, examples and illustrations. Use your own words as far as possible. Believe it or not, you're more likely to write the summary in your own words if you do it without the original text in front of you. 
This way, you avoid the temptation of copying chunks of text from the passage, and then you're forced to express the ideas in your own way. Let's move on now. After you have finished your summary, compare your summary with the original to see that you have included all the essential and none of the trivial points. At the beginning of this lesson, I mentioned that you may be asked to complete formal summaries when writing tests and exams. Here are some tips that will help you when writing summaries. Remember that the formal summary or precy usually shortens the original passage to one-third of its original length. A common approach for a summary question would be for the examiner or teacher to ask you to summarize a text to enable you to report that information to your fellow learners. In the example we looked at on Mohale City, we practiced extracting the essential information from the original text. This is an important part of writing a summary, but now we need to express that information in clear, continuous English. A summary tests our ability to select the important details and our competence in writing good English. The approach to a formal summary is different to that of a point form summary. Remember, for a formal summary, the format needs to be that of one paragraph. OK, we should have enough information now to enable us to write a coherent summary of our Mohale City article. It's often a good idea to look at the article from the point of view of someone reading it for the first time. Ask yourself, does my summary contain all the points necessary to give the reader all that is essential and important? Let's see what our summary looks like. It's at this stage, by the way, that you need to show what your skills are. Don't be afraid to use your own words or to rearrange the order of the information. Cradle of Humankind Wins Competition Mohale City, named after Chief Mohale of the Bapo Ba Mohale tribe, has been awarded the 2002 Engine Prize for the top town and village in Gauteng. Mohale City encompasses both Mahalisburg and Krugersdorp. 39 words. If we read through the summary, we find that it fits the requirements of a good formal summary because it meets the following criteria. The basic information of the original article is included. It makes sense by itself. It reads as one continuous paragraph. And lastly, a word count is included. Let's talk a bit more about the word count. Notice that I included the number of words used in the summary in brackets at the end. The point of a summary is to include as much information in as few words as possible. A formal summary will usually require you to use not more than a specific number of words. Because of this, it's essential that you include an accurate word count at the end of each summary. Always be honest about the number of words used. Count every word in your summary, including words such as a, an, and the. Write the number of words you have used in your summary in brackets at the end. Include the title in your word count unless the instructions state that you should not do this. Believe it or not, examiners often count the words you have used. It's better to use a few more words than to lie. You should now be familiar with all the skills required to write a good formal summary. Remember, all of these skills require practice, so try them out on this task. Find an interesting article in the newspaper. Count the number of words in the article. 
write a formal summary of the article using a third of the original words. As you complete this task, remember that you need to use your own words, provide a suitable title, and include the main points. Count the number of words you have used, and then write them in at the end. Ask a friend to read the summary and tell you what the original article was about. Your friend should be able to work out what the article was about without reading the original. You should now have a comprehensive understanding of the skills required in writing summaries. Remember, read with your brain as well as your eyes and practice. These skills will help you in many areas of your life. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.